somehow it seems quite appropriate uh, for there to be a course that's dealing with change right now because the ashram is in the middle of lots of changes. There's lots happening here in terms of how we operate the ashram and how we share responsibility for what happens here. Um, and there's uh, lots of challenges involved in that because we've become accustomed to a certain way of doing things just like anybody else. And so as we change, we have to adjust. And uh, there was a wonderful saying that Swami, uh, Swami Radha's guru used to say, adapt, adjust, accommodate. And there's even a, a little bhajan that goes with that. But, um, I'll save that for another occasion. So um, this is a book. This is the old edition of a book that's called Time to be Holy. I think you can even download it now. Um, so uh, it's portable. You can take it wherever you go on your digital devices. And I thought I would read a little bit about what Swami Radha's perspective was about change. And often uh, she used the word challenge um, to encompass a lot of different aspects of change. So I thought I would use that as the key word for this evening. And actually one of the first um, uh, interesting occasions that I had, I first met her quite a long time ago, but the first time I saw her in public in, in terms of her presentation of, of yoga and her work, her very specific work that she was given to do, was at a conference in Calgary called Challenge for Change in 1980. So that's, that's a little over three decades ago, right? And um, what I was most impressed by there was her ability to speak to an audience who were mostly people who were interested in yoga, but there was a very wide range of um, backgrounds there. There were Buddhists, there were Hindus, there were Muslims, there were people of all kinds of um, uh, uh, denominations, all kinds of uh, uh, backgrounds of training in yoga. And what she had to say uh, was quite inspiring for everybody to hear her approach to her experience of change in her life. And those of you who've read a little bit about her life know that she had a lot of challenges. So she could speak from experience, and it was that practical aspect of her experience that I think people appreciated the most, um, because they could do something with it in their own lives. This is from a, um, a passage that's called um, Getting Along with Others. Don't avoid the sources of your awareness. That is very important. Rather, accept the challenges and seek them out. The person who is challenging you with anger or injustice is only an instrument of the divine because you need the lesson. If you handle the challenge well, you won't have to learn that lesson again. That's your reward. But if you want additional reward, then you will have to face this challenge again because you did not act selflessly. To know and understand that needs thinking in depth. And that's one of the specialties of the ashram, is teaching us how to think in depth, teaching me how to think in depth and to learn in a different way than we learn in the world that we grew up in and that um, we were educated in. This is another um, quotation from uh, a section in the book called Good Intentions. And she's talking here about evolution. The evolution of consciousness does not depend on all the good things you do. You can give everything away. But if you are then very proud that you did that, that pride nullifies your actions. The good intention of renouncing, of being generous, is not sufficient if it doesn't go with a certain depth of feeling. Evolution of consciousness comes only when you use the challenges that daily life brings you in the circumstances in which you find yourself, and when you do something in a positive manner to meet those challenges. Then you will be able to conquer yourself and come to a point where you can say, this person has made my life so difficult with all sorts of rejections and unjust criticism, but now finally I can go to this person and say, thank you. The divine messenger is not just the person who gives you a lovely gift, but also the one who tells you very truthfully where you are. You need to know that 
and the person who tells you was chosen by what I call your divine committee. If you're interested in that, you can read more about the divine committee, what her concept was in some of her books. This next uh, brief quotation is from a chapter on faith. You have to meet the challenges life has to offer. Do you want to go through another ten lifetimes? Each one just another painful struggle, and perhaps in circumstances much less comfortable than this one. Sometimes our faith is strong, and at other times we are on a teeter-totter, questioning the same thing over and over again. But if you pray, particularly to Divine Mother, this will help you to strengthen your faith. At some time you will have to accept the challenge to walk through life in darkness, not knowing really where you are going, hoping it's the right direction toward the divine. Increase self-mastery, increase self-control, increase your faith, increase your desire to gain in wisdom because that makes for liberation and sets you free. And always remember that the divine spark, the essence, is imperishable. This is from Fulfillment. It is a fact that life has become very complex in modern times and presents us with lots of challenges. Can you accept the challenge? Is the challenge too big? Is the acceptance of some very daring challenges a price paid too high? Will these challenges bring you closer to what you think you are here for? Will they give you that fulfillment? No, even the greatest challenges you can accept will give you only temporarily a sense of fulfillment. Let's look at togetherness. You may say, together we will do things. Together we will build a career. Together we will build a business. Sometimes this togetherness is done even at the cost of the family. The children are sometimes left to themselves while the parents build a family empire. Even though it may be important to the parents, it should not be built at the expense of others, of children, whether they are small or whether they are teenagers. Then we can look at needs, his needs, her needs, the children's needs. Accepting challenges and wanting to be accepted by another are really just ways to provide for our needs. They are really a disguised form of self-gratification. And the last reading I'm going to um, do this evening is from uh, a section that's called Spiritualizing Marriage. But you can take it in, whether you're married or not, you can take it in um, many different ways in, to apply to your own life circumstances. Challenges come to give you the opportunity to grow beyond the limitations that you have drawn around yourself, to give you the opportunity to go beyond yourself. You can go as far as you want to go. You can push out your self-created limitations so that you can know more, understand more, and make it to the top of the mountain. And when you get to the top of the mountain, then what? Wait until you are picked up by the light. Maybe a great spiral of light will come to you, or maybe your dreams will make an announcement. How it comes is different for everybody, but once you have even a little taste of that divine love, tenderness, sweetness, I can assure you nothing else will ever be good enough. The greatest love in the affair in the world ends by physical death, if no other way. But a love affair with the divine really only begins when you live this earth. So why be satisfied with less if you can have so much more? So there's a whole bunch of different approaches that she had to um, the challenges that she faced in her life and the changes um, that she was able to make as a result of those challenges and so provide 
um, that kind of advice to us so we can benefit and learn. Um, I'll bring Prasad around now. And as I bring Prasad around, we'll say the prayer to the Divine Mother of the Universe. It's on page 7.